season, Scott Kazmir reemerged as a premier arm in the American League. The free agent signed with Oakland, and in 2014, it was a true rebound year for the left-hander. His 11 wins before the All-Star break earned him a trip to the Summer Classic. He ended the season with a career-high 15 wins. So far, 2015 has been great for Casper. His spring starts were outstanding, but after a frustrating end to 2014, there's still plenty to prove for the 31-year-old. Tonight, Scott makes his season debut versus the Rangers. Coming up next. Wednesday night baseball from the O.Co. Coliseum. Another chilly night. It's game three of the series. Scott Casimir will take the mound for the Athletics. And that's the newest day. The veteran, Cody Ross, he's in the lineup tonight. So game three of the four-game series. Oakland A's, Texas Rangers coming up on Comcast Sportsnet, California. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's baseball, along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. Well, just two games into the season, then the A's have another new player, Ray. It's the veteran, Cody Ross, and uh, he's going to get a chance to play, probably against a lot of left-handers, and he's in there tonight. You know, Coco Crisp on the disabled list with the elbow injury. He's going to be out quite a while, so the A's, with the opportunity, and, of course, the veteran and Cody Ross being able to be acquired. Of course, the Arizona Diamondbacks did not feel that he was going to work out for them, so he let him go. The A's are getting a pretty good outfielder, a pretty good hitter. He's had some great numbers through throughout his career with the different ball clubs, especially across the bay with the Giants. But I think from the A standpoint, looking for a little veteran leadership, they get it. And, of course, with uh, Josh Reddick coming back probably on Saturday, but they still, with Coco out, they're going to need some more outfielders and they get Cody Ross. Scott Kazmir is going to pitch tonight. He led the A's in wins last year with 15. And uh, speaking of veteran leadership, yeah. Scott Kazmir is going to need to be that with such a young rotation. You know, watching him pitch this spring, and, of course, we got to see him all of last year winning the 15 games. What a spring he had. And he said, I've never felt better. Of course, coming off a season in which he probably pitched more than was expected considering he had been out of baseball for a couple of years, kind of redefined himself, made himself a very good pitcher. And he's a pitcher now, not just rearing back and throwing fastballs. That's why he has made himself such a great pitcher and we got a chance to see it last year and I'm sure we're going to see it again this year. And the Rangers will send a left-hander of their own. Ross Detweiler came over in a trade in the offseason. So a pair of left-handers set to square off in game three of the series. Each team has won a game in the series so far. We'll have lineups and first pitch from the O.Co. when we come back.
is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Jack's hottest sandwich is back. Head to Jack in the Box for Jack's Blazing Chicken Sandwich. By Toyota, number one in MPG, durability and resale value. Toyota, let's go places. And by DraftKings.com. Play daily fantasy baseball for free on DraftKings.com with the official daily fantasy partner of Major League Baseball. Enter promo code Oakland for free entry. Welcome back to the O.co Coliseum. We are just moments away from Scott Casimir making his first start of the 2015 season. A's in the all-white uniforms tonight. Game time weather for tonight is brought to you by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Boardwalk is open daily for spring break March 20th through April 12th. 59 degrees. So just a touch warmer than last night. And it feels a little bit warmer than last night. It was a chilly night at the ballpark last night. I'd say it was worse than chilly. I think it was cold. Yeah, it, was. it was playing cold, and but right, it's nice tonight. Right when the game ended, it started to rain a little That's bit. Right. So we got out of here just in time. Lineup for the Texas Rangers tonight. Martin will lead off again, then Andrus at short. Beltre will DH tonight. Prince Fielder at first. Ru moves up a spot. He's in left. Jake Smolinski, remember him? He had a great series against the A's here at the Coliseum last year. He's in right. Rosales at third. Odor at second. Trinos is the catcher. Scott Kazmir who has won nine games against the Rangers in his career, of course, with a few different teams. Tampa Bay, of course, Cleveland pitched well. And, of course, with the Athletics, it's got Kazmir 15 wins last year. And what a job he has done for the Athletics. And second year of his two-year contract, and he would like to get started the way he pitched during spring training, which was excellent. So Martin steps in, and we are set for game three of the series. A's won on Monday night. Nothing Rangers won last night, three to one. So Casimir's first pitch of the ball game, bunted right side. Canna picks it up and then he drops it and Martin is aboard. First pitch. Seven so how about seven. that? So Leonis Martin probably looked at the A's lineup and said Canna. Mm -hmm. hmm. Rookie playing first base. Let's try him out, and he did. And getting the first pitch fastball, and Canna felt that he probably was going to have to catch and tag at the same time. Trying to catch, looked up, unfortunately, at that time, and thought he had the ball in his glove, but did not. So, he was Martin on with a bunt, and a pretty good one at that, but, you know, with the left-handed pitcher also falling off third base side, that maybe kind of uh, got Martin thinking about. Look, <laughs> 17 last year, he's done it a few times already. So that'll bring up Elvis Andrus. He bunts. Casimir. Let's Figley have it. And Figley throws him out at first on a pretty close play. Expo on that first play was brought to you by Cash Creek Casino Resort. So Andrus well, moves the runner over, but I think he was probably so thinking about a base hit as well. Well, trying to push the ball. And Figley out Adrian very quickly and Bell's using play. the glove, getting the ball in his hand and throwing quickly to get the speedy Andrus, who Actually, they down a pretty good bunt. Small ball early, right? Now, Beltre bunts, we know something's going on. I don't think Jeff Bannister wants his uh, DH tonight in Gold Glove third baseman. Getting the half day off tonight. Probably be in the lineup tomorrow, back at his normal position. First pitch is a fastball. Somewhere. Inside, right? <laughs> Somewhere, I agree. Looked Somewhere. Like it was right down the middle. Yeah, it sure did. Jim Wolf is the home plate umpire tonight. 19 homer 77 RBIs last year for Adrian Beltre. Still looking for his first hit this year. There's Wolf behind the plate. Adam Hamara at first, Bill Miller at second. Doug Eddings is at third. Nice pitch must have confused Fagley. He's talking to Kazmir. Kind of took off on him. As a cutter and uh, maybe cut a little bit too more or maybe too much or maybe it was a fastball that ended up running. So they were talking about a little bit. Think about catchers in today's baseball which has started for many many years now where the starting catcher will be in the bullpen warming up the starting pitcher. So get a chance to actually see him throwing and catch him in the bullpen before taking them out. Tyler Leidendorf playing second base tonight he sneaks in. Trying to keep Martin close. Martin very fast. 
He's got a good lead at second. Beltre swings and misses that off speed pitch. So Beltre sitting 2 0, yeah. and he took a good rip. Well, that's a changeup, and what a great pitch Scott Casimir has developed. An outstanding changeup, but to throw it 2 0, perfect time to do it. The left handed Prince Fielder in the on deck circle, but Fielder a good hitter, as is Beltre, and that's a perfect time to throw the changeup when he's sitting fast. And that is the pitch really that has made Kazmir an excellent pitcher, not just a throw, and that's a changeup that he throws just like his fastball. Kazmir last year, 32 starts, 190 innings. And that innings total was the second highest for him in his career. He threw 206 innings way back in 2007. The starting pitchers sitting. On the side of Stephen Vogt, Kurt Young, of course, a pitching coach, Mike Gallego, skipper, but Stephen Vogt was the left hitter, that one of pitching the night. It's the night off. He'll be back probably tomorrow with Martinez on the mound. Cap, you know, pitching coaches don't like to see it, managers probably don't, but I'm a strong believer, always have been, that in this case where you could see Scott Kazmir calling Fickley out to talk. He added subtract. This is a point in time where Scott Kazmir needs to call his own game. You know, and, and instead of shaking, sometimes it's easier and quicker just to add and subtract to go to the pitch that you want and get more of a rhythm that way. See, right now he's between having a runner on base, a couple of bunts, and a little confusion between pitcher and catcher. That's not a good rhythm to be in. Oh, back. Well, listen. You were a catcher for a long time. And I never understood why a pitcher sometimes gets mad at a catcher <laughs> after he throws a pitch that maybe he didn't like. If you don't like it, then don't throw it. If you're not 100% committed to the pitch that you want to throw, keep shaking until you get it. I mean, that, that, that's what you have to do. Because ultimately, catcher only suggests what to throw. He suggests a certain pitch. If you as a pitcher don't like it, and you're not committed to that pitch, then don't throw it. I agree with you 100%. So, so if, if all the charts and everything say throw this certain pitch, but if you don't have 100% conviction behind it, you may be better off throwing the wrong pitch yeah. with 100% conviction. Right. Exactly. Or the pitch that you definitely that you feel at that's least. Right. Yeah, maybe not according to scouting reports, but things do change throughout a game. 3 2 is tapped. Scooped up by Laurie at third. Fires a little bit high. Canna reaches up, comes down on the bag. Two outs. Let's take a look at the defense for the A's. You want new names? We got <laughs> new names for you folks everywhere. Zobrist, Gentry, Ross in the outfield, Laurie, Simeon, Leidendorf, Canna, and Begley. If we would have flipped up that chart defensively, at the end of last year and said Ray in game three of the 2015 season. This is going to be our nine. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I think we would have been shocked at all the new names that are on that list. That young man Tyler Leidendorf is excited. His he made his first opening night roster was excited to be on the line. And then he's in his first game tonight playing at second base. I tell you his versatility. He's got a whole stack of gloves that he brings out. Infielder, outfielder, so the versatility that he has. And I said, I'll see all those gloves. I don't see a catcher's mitt. He said, If you want me to catch, I'll catch. And that's uh, trying to figure out who the emergency guy might be anyway, and he might be it. Well, that right side of the diamond, Canna and Lindorf, it's a major league debut for Absolutely. both of them. Yeah. So. And both of them playing positions that. I wouldn't say unfamiliar, but they're different. You know, because Canna has been more of an outfielder. He's playing the first local young man and went to Cal. And of course, Layton Dorf, infielder, outfielder. Kind of fun to watch. Infielder takes one and two the count. Casimir trying to work out of a little jam here in the first. Outfield deep and shifted toward left center a touch. It's the old claim to pull on the ground. Opposite field in the air. High fastball swing and a miss struck you down. So 
Casimir gets out of the jam. Martin is stranded at second base. Here come the A's in the bottom of the first. A's fans, discover a new way to find your beach. Introducing the new career. Check out the lineup, folks. Gentry in center, Ross in right, Zobris in left, Butler the DH, Canna at first, Laurie at third, Fegley the catcher, Simeon the shortstop, Lindor the second baseman. Ross Detweiler is the starting pitcher, and A's did seem briefly when the Nationals came to town last year. He was in the bullpen, but he was a starter. Last started in July of 2013, but he wanted to be a starter. The Rangers said, we'll take you, and... He made it. He's in rotation go, exactly where he wants to be. Kipe. Reason there's so many right handers, he's pretty good against lefties. So I think they want to keep as many out as possible. And that is the reason. Rangers defense has Rua, Martin, and Smolinski in the outfield. Rosales, Andres, Odor, Fielder, and the infield. Chirinos back behind the plate tonight after getting last night off. So did you see that A's lineup? Gentry. The only name that's not new. That's right. That's good Everybody point. else, two through nine, not with the Athletics last year. So Gentry facing Ross Detweiler, the 29-year-old left-hander. It is interesting, Ray Detweiler, as you said, been a starter for most of his career except for last year, and he was a pretty good spot reliever for the Nationals last year. Fastball curve change up a couple of different fastballs, but. With his numbers uh, of success against lefties, he has facing all righties tonight, and that's a pitch probably he'd like to feature a fastball inside and then turn it over outside with a two seamer. There's the breakdown starter reliever. 47 of those relief appearances happened last year. Sky to left. Rua gets back, and he's got it for the first down. So the last time. Detweiler made a start was July 3rd of 2013. He was an extremely high draft pick, right? He was the sixth overall pick in the 2007 draft by the Washington Nationals. Let's see, he's left handed and he's a pitcher. Yeah. I'd say that's a, that's a good call. Went to Missouri State University. His best season with Washington was 2012. He went 10 and 8, 27 starts. So here's Cody Ross, the newest athletic. Let go by the Diamondbacks, signed by the A's. And what Cody Ross does with the athletics. Bob Melvin said, a chance to play some. He certainly against left handers. He can play left field, he can play right field. Tonight he's playing right field. He's 34 years old, 10th year in the big leagues. He's bounced around quite a bit. Not a real big guy, but he's got pretty good power. He's got experience, and that's something that's always helpful with the club, regardless of the 
veterans or the youngsters on the team. Two two pitch is hit high in the air, foul territory. And Swinski will not be able to most of his time in the big leagues, Cody Ross, has been in the National League. He has spent a little bit of time in the American League with the Red Sox in 2012, and he had a good year that year. That uh, young man in the green and gold down on the Rangers bullpen, who's the ball boy, made a nice effort. Uh, he kept that, but that ball's in play, and you got the right fielder <laughs> coming over. It's a pretty good idea that you wait until. The ball is in the seats, on the ground, but you did not want to interfere with somebody trying to catch the ball. <laughs> funny. <laughs> a little funny there, a little interesting. He's showing, I can play this game. He made a good effort. Yes, he did, but man, that ball still lands in fair territory or in play. Stay in your seat. Chopped over the mound, right to Odor, and that's out number two. So Detweiler gets Gentry and Ross, and now he'll face Ben Zobrist. Cody Ross retired in his first at bat with the Athletics. These will have another roster decision to make come Saturday if Josh Reddick comes off the disabled list, like he's planned that he will if he. Comes out of his game that he's playing in the minor leagues okay tomorrow night. Reddick Red comes back this weekend. He's got to go. Andrews slides to his right, straightens up. And that's a three up, three down inning for Ross Detweiler. On to the second. No score between the A's and the Rangers. Check this out. Lowest opponent's batting average by right-handed hitters against left-handed pitchers. Now that's interesting because of the platoon. So right-handed hitters hit just 227 against Scott Casimir. Kershaw on top, then Lariano and Sale. Lester, Duffy, all very good left-handed pitchers. So that's a you want to be on that list if you're a left-handed pitcher yeah. because most managers are going to say, let's get some right-handed hitters. Especially guys like Sale. Ooh. Drop down from the side. Kazmir is the type of pitcher that will do that though against lefties because righties have to worry about the change up. We saw Beltre swing at a 2 0. You saw Ra there swing at an 0 1 change up and swung a miss. But at left, you can throw a change up to left handed hitter. That's a good one. That's a pretty good fastball, a little bit extra on that heater from Kazmir at 94. Narua strikes out. 
So how about a change up at about 85 and then a fastball 94 that will mess up a hitter quickly than anything, quicker than anything. Batting in the sixth position right fielder number 20 Jake Smolinski. Here's Sm Smolinski. Jake Smolinski. Playing right field tonight. Smolinski. Came in here last year for a three game series late in the season and he was tough to get out. He went six for 13 and had some big hits. And Rangers played the A's tough last year. They actually won the season series 10 to 9 over the A's. They were a scrappy group when the A's saw them late in the year. He's got to see the Rangers early and late, and this was on the 16th of the September. Was Kaliski against one Scott Kazmir? Said, see you later. First major league home run for Smolinski. Left center field. He's got Kazmir, and I think we're looking really at a different Scott Kazmir now. Of course, that was the end of the season, and Smolinski was able to get it. First major league home run. Well, if the possum didn't get the ball, then Smolenski was able to get it. For Texas, versus Texas, that was what the A's did. Good fastball. Strikeouts for Casper here in the second. See, Smolenski, and while he swung the bat well against the A's in September, he did not see that from Scott Casper on the 16th of September because Scott was making the start, which was number 30. This is start number one. And Scott Kazmir probably remembers Smolenski more than anybody. And I wouldn't remember until Delaire brought it up. And but pitchers remember those things. They remember who hit them. And Smolenski hit one to left center, excited, which he should have been his first major league home run. But this time Scott Kazmir got him with a good fastball. Here's Adam Rosales, who has made this roster for the Rangers. So we're happy about that for Adam. He was playing a lot late in the year as well for the Rangers. Yeah, his wife Kaylee, the proud parents, and uh, that was a relationship that began when Adam was with the A's. Uh, they got married on, guess what? 11, 11, 11. Nice. I don't know if it was 11 o'clock, but if it was November 11, 2011. A lot of things happen on 11, 11, 11. Rosie, always high energy. The energy, uh, energizer bunny just never stops. Nope, that's he, not going to change. He keeps going, and that's a great way to play the game. He did good numbers against Kazmir. Seven for 17 in his career with a home run. Takes that one in first strike. So two and two the count, 94 miles an hour. So Kazmir throwing hard in his first start of this season. Just missed outside, but again, 94. And the great thing about Kazmir with the changeup, he's already thrown to the right hander, is now showing 94. He can go. Either way, with a good fastball, this one just to the white line off the plate. Jump off, set up pretty much behind Fegley, not too much of the slot, as they call it. Yeah. Two pitch swing and a miss, and Casimir strikes out the side. All three hitters, he strikes out swinging. Bottom of the second, coming up, no score.
On Saturday, April the 25th, when the A's take on the Houston Astros, 20,000 fans will receive the creative T-shirt courtesy of Grant Thornton LLP, which features Sean Doolittle, Coco Chris, and Sonny Gray. Emoji T-shirt. Emoji. Say that enough by the 25th? Get it down. Go Billy Butler leading it off. Detweiler had a three up, three down first inning. A couple of ground outs and a fly ball to left field. Butler, Canna, and Lori here in the second inning. Oh. Ooh, a little strike called by Jim Wolf. Hey, congratulations to our old friend Chip Hale. Chip Hale, the new manager of the Arizona Diamondbacks. He got his first major league win last year. So we're glad for Chip. I know Bob Melvin called and congratulated him. Talked about it a little bit. So Chip's got a win. Sure. Got the Bats. lineup card. Thought he got it right his side. Got a game ball. Put in his trophy room. Jeff Bannister also got his first last night for the, the Rangers. Should be up there. And a good one. Butler strikes out. How about Sonny Gray tonight? Not pitching. Pitched a near no hitter on Monday night. Learns how to take out the umpire. Hello, Mr. Wolf. How you doing? Good to see you, Mr. Bannister. Sir, good to see you, Mr. Miller. Yeah. Yeah. You got to check it to make sure that everything is just right. See, Bob Melvin, they lost last night. So tonight he said, Sonny Gray, take out the lineup. Now, the interesting thing, the A's win tonight, win tomorrow, and win Thursday or Friday. Sonny Gray's pitching Saturday. Does he take it out Saturday? Sure. <laughs> well, territory, but a nice play by Robinson Chirino. So Canna, first big league at bat, swings at the first pitch and fouls out. Chirinos, if you just look at the mileage that he had to go, yeah. he went a long ways. A Prince Fielder also a long way to run. Chirinos in front of the dugout kept looking to see and he was getting any help necessary, but he didn't need it because he stayed on the warning track. That is how far. But see, a catcher is accustomed to backing up first, so he has to run that far anyway. So he's in shape enough to do it for Mark Canna. His first at bat didn't work out that way. So pretty fun running with the shin guards on and yeah, everything. Yeah. You know, doesn't I, slow you down at no, all. No, no, I had some actually managers that went to first spring training. We had to run sprints with catching gear. And I said, why are you doing this? Is it get used to it? There's a shot down the left field line, but foul. Nice play by fan down there. Did not have home run distance. In fact, it sounded good, but you know that Lori got it on the sweet spot. So going to the count. Brett Laurie knows all about being down 0 2. <laughs> that is the night last night. That is the first pitch out of the strike zone in the last 14 pitches. He had 14 consecutive strikes thrown to him. Whether the strikes or not, he was a strikeout victim and two tonight. And the majority of them were sliders. Yeah. I think 11 of the 12 were slider curveball, something of the breaking variety. But the great thing about baseball, as we well know, Whatever you do yesterday, it's forgotten whether good or bad. In the case of Laurie, he wants to forget the bad and come out ready to go tonight. Sorry, he's made a very good play defensively. Checked his swing. That's a good take. Yeah. That's a pretty nasty pitch from Detweiler. A big, like a big, big sweeping slider. Well, well, the word between the Rangers and the A's and people up here was that if Brett Lori gets anything besides an off speed pitch, breaking ball, curveball, slider, something like that, there's something wrong. And so I would think even maybe now 3 2. This would be an interesting call to see what the Rangers do. What Chirinos cause and if that one is going to go with the pitch if it's off speed. Swing there on a fastball that was in on the hands a little bit. What do you think about it with two outs, three and two count? Challenging guy. I mean, why, why you want to try to fool him and maybe take a chance of walking? So you got to challenge fastball on that one and see what happens on the next one. Setting up outside. And it was drilled right center, slicing away from Martin, and he's not going to get it. And Laurie is going to try for third. The throw to third is in time, and he is out, and he's out by quite a bit. 
So Brett Laurie give him a double thrown out trying to stretch it into a triple and the side is retired. Strikeout. That was Fielder. A strikeout. Ugh. A strikeout. Smolensky. And guess what Rosales did? Fourth in a row. Strike three. So that is it. And for Scott Casimir, find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT. Mobilizing your world. There's your four strikeouts That's all right. in a row. So those fans are on top of it. Here's Rodnett Odour, followed by Chirinos, and then the top of the order, Martin. Top of the third, no score. So 2 0 the count to Odour, who's 0 for 5 to start the season. He's been hit by a pitch a couple of times. I even wrote an article saying are the Rangers kind of diving and trying to get hit on fastballs or pitches inside and really it's not really working out that well. It's uh, barely touching some of the hitters and a curveball in the case of last night with Hahn hitting fielder with a curveball. Not much he could do about that one. One high fastball popped up. Simeon on the outfield grass makes the catch. So, so Kazmir, he's got good velocity tonight, and if he elevates it just a little bit, it's a tough pitch to get to. And how about that? Got three and oh, called strike, and then a fastball on three and one. Robinson and Odor to the left side just popped the ball up. So, one away for Robinson Chirinos. Angels and the Mariners are underway. That's the rubber game of that series up in Seattle. And it's Shoemaker for the Angels, Iwakuma for Seattle. And the Angels scored four in the first. Is that right, guys? Four in the first. Yeah, Albert Pujols hit a home run. Career home run number 521. Pujols, a two run shot. Added a couple more. So Angels up early on Iwakuma. We'll see the Mariners on Friday night, which looking forward to seeing them. They're going to be a good team this year. Added Nelson Cruz. Well, that would shock people in the Northwest that they actually lost game two, considering what what they were supposed to be doing. Phoenix can't pitch every day. No. Nope. They say you're going to win 60, you're going to lose 60, and it's what you <laughs> do in those other 42 that make your 
this season. That's a pretty good changeup. That's a changeup. It's so good, so great. Longest bat toss. That's over 90 feet down the third base line. So one and two to Chirinos. Chirinos one for eight in his career against Scott Casby. Good pitch, strike three called. Everybody knew it. The first looking strikeout for Scott Casper. Give him five now in the night. Target inside the pitch yeah, outside. Buddy. Good job Number catching two. the ball by Fegley, and it's One there. Team. It's a strike, and actually turned out to be a pretty good pitch because Fegley hit one of the ball a little bit more inside. Casper finishing his delivery, and Chirinos back to the dugout. Happy. The good thing about the nine batters, five of which have struck out. Not throwing a lot of pitches to nope. do it because you strike out batters usually your pitch count gets up high very quickly. Our team led off the game with a bunt hit. Only hit for Texas and thinks about bunting again and the pitch is outside 2 and 0. Oh. Our team 3 for 10 in the series. Has scored just three runs so far in this series. I mean, shut out on Monday night. Slapped foul. Two and two. We've seen Leonis Martin kind of grow up in the big leagues, and he's turned into a pretty good player, right? Yes. Leonis Martin and Martin Perez. <laughs> Perez, of course, the pitcher on the disabled list, but Leonis Martin, he's got a very, very good arm, one that he loves to show off from center field. Tough to run on. Swing and a miss, and Kazmir is dealing. Six strikeouts through the first three innings. We're going to the bottom of the third. Josh Fegley to lead it off. No score. By Paul Blart, Mall Cop 2, starring Kevin James in theaters April 17th. If it's as good as Paul Blart, Mall Cop 1, it's worth seeing. Did you see the one? Yeah, very funny. Yeah. Kevin James is he's a treat. That's a beautiful sight there. You can see the, the Bay Area. Some great shots from Rick Crew. Fegley, a little flip job that lands a couple feet foul. Josh Fegley. First look at the new catcher from the White Sox. Almost flipped it fair down the right field line. That would have been a thing of beauty for a couple of, of bases. Of 
as the second inning ended on a double off the bat of Brett Lurie and the old rule of thumb don't get thrown out of third for the first out or the third out and unfortunately that did happen but Brett Lurie good to see him make contact solid contact on the three two pitch and drive it to right center and that one hit to left center Martin slides over he's got it so Fegley is retired. One thing the players will realize, and I think probably sooner than later, that the Arizona weather and the dry air and the altitude allow the balls to travel quite well. Not here. It just does not happen right here. <laughs> you couldn't ask for a bigger contrast, exactly. at least this time of year. I mean, tomorrow might see a little bit different. Elvis Andrews might not be wearing earmuffs tomorrow. Who knows? Day game. But the ball just uh, doesn't carry at nighttime here. It, Later you get in the season, August, September. If you're fortunate to play in October, it's a little bit different. Now I would imagine it's always been like that. Is it like that oh, when you played here? Of course. I don't know if Mount Davis has changed anything. There's a base hit to right field. Simeon shoots one the other way. It's great inside out swing by Marcus Simeon. And that's a good start, especially opposite field. Fastball location. So boys, watch him bring his hands in. in the that's Second a great basement. swing. And not bad location Tyler intended by Dittwaller and Marcus Simeon. Watch the hand stay inside, and you take the pitch. If you if you extend your arms, you're going to break your bat. Now we get to watch young Tyler Leidendorf in his major league debut. Simeon, Bay Area native and first. First pitch is a fastball inside to Leidendorf. Dorf was acquired by the A's back in 2009 for Orlando Cabrera. Okay. Minnesota Twins. Orlando Cabrera. Almost forgot that he was an A for a while. Started the season as the A shorts up. Yeah, the trade happened right at the deadline, July 31st. Side again, two and one the count. Well, Laidorf earned the spot in the uh, in the lineup, of course, the roster with his spring training play. Got a chance to play a lot, and one thing he showed that he can play different positions. Played third, second, which he is tonight. Played in the outfield, and the one thing he does when he hits the ball, he runs hard. He plays the game the right way. That is just foul. Spring numbers for Tyler Leidendorf. Pretty good. 27 games. Good average. Knocked in 13 runs. Last year with Sacramento, hit 297. 78 games. Versatility is important for him. This one just foul again. He was saying he just wanted to get on the field, and that's why he was willing and and actually able to play so many different positions. And we've seen Ben Zobers, who know his versatility, switch hitter, play all different positions, and Tyler Leitendorf. His speed allows him to play well in the outfield and gets on base. He can show the speed as well. Driven to the gap. Should score Simeon as he rounds the bag at third. Leidner's going to try for three. He's going to make it, and the A's lead one nothing. How about that? And Mark Canna also a rookie, and he's up on the top step, and it, baseball will be retrieved. And <laughs> he flipped it to him. Pull the hands in, and what a great swing! They were shading him to right center. On the scouting report, there's nobody left center. Get a chance to see his speed for Simeon, who's going to score easily. And there's a little bobble by Martin, but a great swing by Tyler Leidendorf. I would say a double or a triple all the way. Thank you to B.I. And he, a triple, his first major league at bat, an RBI on top of it. Now if he can score a run after doing that, that makes it even more special. The 
baseball, and that's uh, that's one that's a very special memento. Dominic doing the authentication. He will authenticate that baseball, saying that it's his first major league hit. And Gentry gets hit by a pitch. Now they also get Chirinos. Mike Maddox is going to talk to his pitcher, the trainer, to his catcher. Well, a lot of times when it when a hitter gets hit, the ball deflects and it hits the catcher. In this case, it hit the left shoulder of Chirinos, and he does have the padding on the left shoulder, but still, it hurts. So the A's will have first and third. One away for Cody Ross. There's Big Dominic. Dominic. He's got the. It's all done. That boy done. It's authenticated, and Tyler Ladendorf can go on a computer as all people can with the authenticated MLB items. I'd be smiling too, man. Sure. My first major league hit was 30 feet bleeder down right. the third base line. But boy, was the line drive the next you day. you haven't changed the story over the years. <laughs> it hasn't. It hasn't turned into a, a no, screaming double. No, 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 no. It is a. It was a bleeder. I took it. Let it roll. Big curve drops in first drive. We talk about the speed of Tyler Leidendorf. Watch him run, and he knows it's in the gap, and then he can turn it on. And this is all on him. He's looking, saw a little bobble, and then continues to run. So the fact that he did not break his stride enabled him to get the triple and a big clap, which very deserved. And you know, for a young man, Kipe, and with, as you mentioned, the roster moves that it's going to have to be made for Saturday and Reading. The more these young guys can do the job at this level, it makes it a little bit harder for the moves to be made. I'm not saying it's Leitendorf, but some of, somebody's going to have to. Uh, to depart if Josh Reddick is activated on Saturday as expected. Tap to third, and that is a foul ball. Oof. So play at the plate. Oh. It doesn't matter. Leidner went in with a head first. Yeah, slide. that's scary because Chirino's got his foot down, his, his knee down. Wow. And that is scary because he's down the line, and Adam Gonzalez going to the plate, not knowing for fair or foul. See, Chirinos put the put the knee down, and so essentially what Leidendorf is doing is sliding in with his left shoulder into the catcher shin guards. <laughs> yeah, that's a fair ball. That's a reviewable play. He's going to be safe anyway because he's blocking the play without the ball. I mean, that's unfortunately the rule, but that's what Chirinos did. He blocked him off, caught the ball, and then continued, not knowing if it was fair or foul. But that is a play that probably would have been challenged had the ball been fair. It's still scary to slide in head first like that. Gentry's got a big lead at first, so they'll keep an eye on him. So lots of speed on the bases for the A's. And of course, the infield playing in with Gentry at the plate. Now he's at first. They move back for a possible double play ground ball. Two pitch, high fastball, foul right side. So Cody Ross going to get one in the air. Deck Wiley on their hand is looking for a ground ball right at one of his infielders. Gentry getting the big lead, and ideally, if it's a ground ball, he wants to get in the second as hard and quickly as possible. And there's a big hit left field. Under the diving glove of Adam Rosales, Leidendorf scores. Cody Ross with a big hit, and it's two to nothing. The A's lead. Two strike hit by Leidendorf. Two strike hit by Ross. Think of beauty right there. Just to get those hits. All oh, the congrats for Leidendorf hanging breaking ball. And probably the thing that helped Ross the most. And here comes a big hanging curve ball. Adam Rosales could not get to it. The A's have scored another one. So for Cody Ross, a little bit different for Leidendorf, but Leidendorf, and that's special. Boy, that is special. The first hit, first run scored, and first baseball for that hit, too. That's great. He's looking for 
more as Zobra steps in. Still just one out. And he bunts it into the air. And we're just going to scratch our head on that one. And that's the second out. So they bring up Butler. Well, the, the scratch that you mentioned, while you know maybe an element of surprise with bottom line run, scoring position, the, the runners there, and plus Zobra's got the, the power to bring in three. But you know it's one of those that hitters do try. They figure the third base was playing deep, got a chance to get on base, and Billy Butler could drive in everybody. So Butler steps in, he struck out in the second inning. That's the only strikeout by Detweiler so far. Ball is high. So three hits in the inning and a hit batter. Franchise history. Remember Sam Fold had a triple Monday night and Tuesday night. The first time since 1914. Like Not as long as it's been. It's, it's, it's about as long as the Cubs haven't won a World Series. 08 for them. At least since 14. I guess a lot of statistics weren't kept for, for many years. Ten, eleven, thirteen, those are good years. Three and one to Butler. And that one rolled foul. You see Detweiler take something off. That went 86 miles an hour. <laughs> the pitch speed range for Detweiler. The four seam fastball and the sinker at the same speed. Not close with the runners on the move, and the bases are loaded for Kenna. Well, with those velocities that you mentioned, that makes it tough for a pitcher, easy for a hitter, or at least relatively easy because. You can really think off speed and be able to turn on a fastball if you get it. So Mark Canna very excited about his teammate Tyler Laidendorf getting his first major league hit in his first at bat. Mark Canna trying to do something even more and in this at bat with two outs and trying to bring home a couple with his first hit. Curve outside. So Detweiler who was very sharp the first two innings. The control has not been there. Look at this guy. This is what Mark Canna did during spring training. See the hole on the right side? They're expecting him to pull, but he showed he gets fastballs away. He'll go to right field, and they're opening up the whole right side for him. Huge hole on that right side. It is amazing, but uh, I mean, he made some great adjustments during spring training, and I keep saying spring training because that's the first time I really had a chance to see him. Very excited when he was acquired by the Athletics from Colorado. San Jose lives there, Bellman, Fred, Cass, I mean, all Bay Area for him. A little bit inside. And he's in that Rule 5 category, like Nate Fryman was a couple of years ago, which uh, he's kept Nate all season, deservedly so. And that's pretty much the same thing for Mark Cannon. He has to be offered back to. Marlins. Not a bad spot to be in. Rule five is great. He hits with this one deep to right center field. Martin going back at the wall, leaps, and it is up off the top of the wall. And three runs are going to score, and Canna has a three run double for his first major league hit, and he almost pumped one out of here.
How about this inning? Two rookies, four ribbies, and a lot of excitement. And yes, they'll get the baseball cap. You're right. That hit on top of the wall did come back. Now, what if Bob Melvin is going to check to see? We're going to take another look and see. He's going to check. Right center field stayed inside the ball. What a great swing by Mark Canna. And he has the power to show exactly what he did. Let's see where it hits off the wall. Now he hit on the top and came back. They're going to review it, but I don't, didn't hit anything behind, did it? It didn't look like it. It looked like, looked like he hit on top of the wall. He thought so. But unless it hit something behind, but I don't think there's anything behind where it did hit. Umpires are meeting right in the now, middle. Now of the check field. the top. Now watch at the top right there. It looks like it's the top of the wall. Now, yet is there something behind for it to hit and come back? They're going to take a look at it. They hit the top and popped right up. But they are going to take a look at it. You know what, Ray? Though, as I look out there through my binoculars, there are what looks like. It's a post post back there. Yeah, there's two posts yeah, uh, that are holding up Mount Davis. Well, no, but even in that area, it, even right right behind the, it's like every every two post here. Yeah. yeah. You, well, you can see. Look a little closer though. Every two two mats out there. Yeah. There's it's like there's a post behind there. review. So it hit there, and I don't know if we yeah. can pan back and see how close that is. I well, probably can't, but it looks like it hit at an angle. The top of the wall and came back, and just does not look like behind the wall right there. There is anything for it to hit. The wall hit back there and then bounced back. But the umpires will take a look at it. And see, he just looked at Mark Cannon. See the shake on his head, just like uh, Odor the other night when he dropped the ball. Similar look, but it's worth. Taking a look at, we know it's at least a three run double. Not bad for your first major league hit. Grand Salami might be a little bit better. What well, would be? So the A's have scored five for sure in the inning. So it's going to be a double. Yeah. Just fine. You take it. I mean, considering a two out, three run double, and even Big Billy Butler able to score from first base as with two outs, he was on the move. That's great. What a great look. <laughs> you know, they say you blink every four seconds. I think he just surpassed that. He may not blink till the ninth <laughs> inning now. A three run double. What a great, great shot. So, two singles, double, triple, walk, hit batter for the A's. They've scored five. And Brett Laurie takes a strike. And Kat, if you think about it, the the first and the last hit before this inning was Brett Laurie, double to right center, thrown out at third, and the A's started it. Their first hit. Paul Bollinger got hit number 3,000 with a triple. And the first one for. Leidendorf and his what he hopes a great career is a triple. A two pitch a fastball high. Nothing better than a crooked number. The A's have put up a five spot in this third inning. That is a very good crooked number. Anders waits for the hot, fires in time to get the hustling glory. Side retired big inning for the A's and a couple of a couple of new guys get their first major league hit. Tyler Lindorf will be a triple and Mark Cannon with a three run double. How about that? We like these young guys. Five up the A's lead.
back the number one app for live baseball and that is up to the moment at any moment with in-game highlights live look-ins replay reviews radio broadcast deadcast and more get mlb.com and back for your smartphone or tablet see really that guy's looking at his phone like that that's the way people walk around now thank you <laughs> thank you <laughs> Couple of happy uh, yeah. youngsters. Right on side of the diamond. Right side. Diamond. How about that? Four ribbies on the right side with a couple of rookies. And Dave Hughes. Yeah. So a great story there. Scott Casimir is a good story. He's got six strikeouts through three innings and now he's got a five run lead. And he's struck out six of the last seven hitters he has faced. He's facing Andrus Beltrain, Prince Fielder here, Rangers. Have not had much luck in the early going against Casimir, just a bunt single. Foul. And only 44 pitches for Scott Casimir, so. I'm trying to think uh, back not too long ago. Mark Conte, somebody got a hit off of John Lackey, retired the next 27 batters. You know, That's right. That Casimir is on his way, but we'll see how he progresses. Casimir grabs that one, fires to first one out. Well, it's so much fun to watch Scott Casimir as a pitcher, and nothing against his ability to throw fastballs as he did with Tampa Bay, but. But just to take his pitching ability and realize that there's more. It's, a, it's like a hitter. Okay? A hitter can say, I want to pull, and then somebody says, there's a lot of hits the other way. It's like a pitcher who says, I can throw 95 to 100 miles an hour, but if I could pitch longer in a game by hitting the spots with off speed pitches, changing speeds, I'm going to get a lot of outs that way. Zobris right there, Beltre, line drive out. Still want them. Yeah, they're with they're, they grabbed his right side and now they're going to go out to take a look at him. Something's happening because uh, as he was turning and, and looking, they probably saw something. Revista and the skipper and been stretching and then after he threw the pitch to Beltre. And then the ball was shot into left field. Yeah, he, yeah. he was stretching out yeah. a couple pitches even before that. But then he kind of grabbed a little bit and so he says he's okay, which is good news. So he's going to face the Prince Fielder with two outs. Nobody on. Right in there, first drive. 11 in a row retired by Casimir after that leadoff bun single by Martin in the very first inning. Slider away. Prince Fielder struck out swinging to end the first inning. It's two for eight in the series. And now one and two. Three miles an hour. Well, there's still something not right with him. And yep. Just have to wonder. Fourth inning, and it's almost like every time he pitches, there's something, and he kind of continues over through that one. And he just threw it outside the Prince Field. I see that. There. Yeah, this is the, the previous pitch before he overthrew that one even more. See, there, there's something that he's feeling, and I don't know. And the last one, even more so, trying to compensate for it, and 
throw it even more and you can see the way it ended up for him. So three and two to Prince Fielder. And a fastball just a bit inside and it's a two out walk. Number 16. The eight I, I got a believe yeah, they left got a side, very see, close eye. See the way he's kind of bending down the left side. So now it's Ryan Rua. And the first pitch. Foul dribbles just to the right of home plate. Rua struck out swinging. He's one for eight on the season. A couple of home runs, 14 RBIs last year when Rua got a chance to play. Swing and a miss. Took a little bit off. And the count is 0 2. Prince Fielder very shortly. Swing and a miss. 93 pumps it past. Ryan Rua strikes him out for the second time, and let's hope Scott Casimir's okay. We go to the bottom of the fourth. It's the A's five. The Rangers nothing. Offer a variety of ticket plans to fit your schedule as well as one of the most flexible ticket exchange policies in all of baseball. These ticket plans provide significant savings off dynamically priced individual game tickets. For more information, you can call 510 638 Goes or visit athletics.com slash ticket plans. Andrus, nice play throw, and Prince Fielder cannot dig it out. Fegley's aboard. We'll see what the ruling is. Ball was not hit real hard. Anderson had to go a long ways to his left. So this was in between innings, right? Yeah, and then they said, let's go upstairs and maybe get some work on it and see what's going to happen. See if it comes back down. Nobody warming up in the bullpen. So maybe this is just to go up and get some quick treatment. We'll see. But uh, that is a base hit. I think we're still on air. It's only because the catcher was running. Six. You know, as far as he had to range up the middle, I'm thinking Laydorf had been down close to the bullpen, but unfortunately, just Fegley's legs, you know, they got those catcher's legs. Shit guard legs. <laughs> Maybe he forgot <laughs> to take them off. Huh? 
Now, Simeon started it a one out single last inning, one opposite field with a nice base hit. See how bad this throw was, Ray. What do you think? Well, I, I I know it's in the dirt, but that's a play a first baseman has to make. And he didn't really stretch out. Yeah, he, he he just tried to short hop a backhand with it. Two and one to Simeon. But the off balance throw by Andrus, that's a that's a tough play for him as far as he had the range. But see how far Prince does stretch and he stretched a little bit. Yeah, but he didn't come up. He just kind of stayed down and then came up after the ball hit him on the wrist. See, I just don't know that that I mean that, that is not just natural effort by Andrus. That was the degree of difficulty. Well, yeah, there. and I, th I think because of that, you can't penalize him because he has good enough range to get to the ball. And unfortunately, we see that too often where an infielder makes a, a great effort, and you know, the official scores will say, well, it's came up with it. It's unfortunate that when he came up off the ground, he made a bad throw, but you have to factor in, he's probably going to have to hurry. Trying to stay warm on a cool night. Two pitch is inside the Simeon, and the A's have an air and a walk, and they got a rally going. We're going to get some action down in the yeah, ballpark. That Weiler, as good as he was the first two innings, has not been very good the last two innings. Logan Verrett starts to warm up. Triple for first big league hit. Miguel Tejada did it in 1997. Yellow Leidendorf did it in 2015. To the gap in left center field, and it knocked in a run. You see where Martinez playing him a little bit more towards left center now. Scatter report had him in right center in the first at bat. A lot of times you'll see outfielders shift a little bit based on the count. You look at the 2 2 pitch, and maybe they thought he would be protecting a little bit more and maybe go opposite field. But he turned it. Begley, Simeon are your runners. Change up. Yeah, that was a pretty good one. This is the triple by Leidendorf. Well, he will watch this for many, many times, and uh, why not? Triple into the gap, showing his speed, and an RBI triple, and drives in the first run. And the great shot was Mark Cannon, and then he would come up later and almost hit a grand slam. It's a good inning for the young guys. Yeah. The bottom of the third. Gentry to follow. He's trying to tack on here in the fourth. In the hole, Anders backhand. So he'll go to third, and Rosales dropped it. And everybody's safe. Now that's going to be an interesting call because for Rosales to have to get back to the bag, try to find the bag, yep. and catch the ball. It's not normal effort. No, it's not. And see, watch this. Watch Rosales. He's he's looking at the ball, trying to find the bag. And if it's a field of choice, five. I think that's a tough call. There's been two tough calls in this inning. Now, granted, the ball, see Rosales look down. Watch, watch the eyes of Rosales as he tries to catch the ball and find the bag. Watch this. He looks down, looking at the bag. He completely takes his eye off the ball. And again, he's trying to hurry to get the bag, take a throw, the only play that Andrews had. And again, it could have been bases loaded with two hits. Field of choice, E5. I still think it's a tough call. So as it goes, a couple of errors in this inning, and the bases are loaded, nobody out. So again, fielder's choice E5 is the call. He's asking, go for two or go to the plate? They want to play for two. Michelle, the bench coach for Jeff Bannister. A little bit low, but called the strike. Gentry can't believe it. Wow. Gentry a fly ball to the left and then he was hit by a pitch and scored in the third. And he scored all five in the third, but it 
great opportunity to score again here in the fourth. Kerr, first shot. Opportunities for a double play, and he doesn't get anything. He got the out, but Prince Fielder was straddling first base, and he didn't have his foot on the bag. And Dadwell looked at second, took the time there, no chance there. Figured lobbed it to first because, like you said, Prince maybe a little bit late getting there, and especially straddling. But yeah, that's not going to work unless he steps on his foot, which he does, or stepped on his hand. So another break for the A's. Wow. And he really could have gone. He could have gone to any bag. Yep. Because all the A's runners had taken a step or two. The problem is he didn't commit to either one. Exactly. He looked, 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 and then threw instead of committing and then throwing. There's Logan Durant starting to throw. But you know, your point was taken. Maybe the guys weren't at the base for him to hurry to throw and try yeah. to get the double play. It happened so quickly. Been an interesting inning Oof. defensively on the infield. So Cody Ross. Chance to have a big night. He's knocked in a run already. RBI single in the third. Fastball just a bit outside. Ross in the first inning grounded out to second. Regardless of whether these should have been hits or errors, the recorded as errors still, the A's have the bases loaded with nothing leaving the infield. And a great opportunity to add on big time. And that one to the backstop. They should get a run and they win. Fegley slides in just ahead of the tag of Detweiler, and it's six to nothing. Pitch off the glove, up off the glove, high, and they had close play. Detweiler getting the plate, but Fegley getting down the line. That's probably going to be a pass ball, and it's going to be an ugly inning defensively. Fegley just barely getting in. As the tag just didn't like that while the one put his face down there. Pass ball it is. So for Dadwater, these are all unearned runs. Nothing's earned in this inning. But bottom line, they are runs for the A's and they'll take it. Ross with a big swing, two and two to cap. So air walk, fielder's choice, air. Line out to the pitcher, pass ball. You're the Texas Rangers. This is a UGLY inning. Mm -hmm. He battles that one. Why do they talk about the disclaimer? Nobody wants to claim it. No, this is this. <laughs> nobody wants this inning. <laughs> A's will take it, especially if they can add on even more. Pitch number 78 coming up from Detweiler. And it's an off speed pitch that Ross chased and he strikes out. So two out. Similar curveball that Cody Ross hit for a base hitter last time. And uh, he's got that little uppercut swing. And that time got under the curveball instead of on top of it. So Zobrist will hit his third at bat. He's grounded out and he's popped out to the catcher trying to bunt. So 0 for 2. Detweiler with a nice play. And I tell you what, the inning could have been a lot better for the A's. They did get the one without a hit. 6 0. The A's lead as we head to the fifth.
CSNCalifornia.com as A's insider Joe Stiglitz provides wire to wire reporting of the A's 2015 season. He's got breaking news, video special features, and more only on CSNCalifornia.com. And he can work and he can eat at the same time. This guy is a multitasker, the great Joe Stiglitz. Joe's been styling three nights in a row. And Joe doesn't know he's on TV because he wouldn't have been crushing that whatever he's eating that much. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody likes to eat during a telecast. That's just terrible. You should never do that. Unless you want to bring some cookies or something up here. We'll it's be up to happy you. to have you. Doing? Well, good to see Scott Kazma back out on the mound. There was some concerns after last inning, but pretty good sign when you look at the bullpen and nobody was warming up, which would indicate that he was going to take the mound again, and he does in the fifth. Facing Smolinski, Rosales, Odua. Got seven strikeouts, one walk, and he's allowed just one hit. He's got a six-nothing lead. That wild I might have. Nice play. Lauren gets up, fires across, and can't ditch it out. Have a night. As Polinski can run too, got down the line and when you look at uh, Ike Davis picking it a couple of times opening night and Number one great nine, pick. This is Adam hard Rosales. for the first baseman. Lowry into the dirt and <laughs> Mark Cano, the ball skipping from the out of the infield grass as Lowry goes into foul territory and up and down and look at the scoop. That's some great hands by Mark Canna. Great stop, takes a double away from Smolensky and So 0 and 2 to count. Watch this pick. That is not an easy no, pick. No, it's either. not. And he watched it all the way and picked that. <laughs> Good pitch outside corner. Painted it. Strike three called. Eighth strikeout for Casimir. Well, that was three very good pitches to Adam Rosales. Right on the outside corner. Yeah, it's like, I'm going to try for the corner. He ends up getting it. Scott Kazmir knew it. So all of a sudden, he and Josh Fegley on the same page, working very well, very quickly. Two outs for Odor. Roten Odor, 21 year old second baseman. For a couple years, Ray, we heard all about jerks and Profar and how he was terrific young prospect for the Rangers and he was going to be their second baseman. They're going to play somewhere. And then when Kinsler got traded, it was this guy's going to be a special player, but Profar with shoulder issues and he missed all last year and he's going to miss all of this year. And what it's done is it's given. Odor a chance to play at a very young age, and he looks like a keeper. Absolutely. We got uh, options for Jeff Manager, Manager, first year manager, John Daniels, or the uh, general manager. Profar shoulder surgery, yeah. out for the year, and doesn't mean he can't come back and still be a good player. He probably will be. But he was the. One of the game's best prospects, at least as far as people talking about him. Big swing does Rogue Meadow Doer. Some guys get new gloves every year, other guys keep their gamers keep from year to year, and it looks like Brett Laurie has used that for a couple years. Well, it works. If he could pick the ball, he just did a foul territory. Diving, getting his uniform dirty. Cliffy got some work for him after the game. He's all set. Outside corner, beats it again. Strike three called. Nine strikeouts through five innings for Casimir. We're going to the bottom of the fifth. Six nothing. A's lead.
Now your team can collaborate at a whole new level with video walls from PRISM. Learn how at PRISM.com. Oh, the umpire's broom. Or brush, I should say. Maybe old Comiskey Park, but yeah. they put the little blower in the, right in the middle of home plate. <laughs> and the umpire would always make sure you're, you're, you're kind of leaning down and he'd hit that button. Oh, it's a mess of Scare you to death, man. <laughs> Seriously, it had just a little pop up like a compressor right in the middle of home plate. But the umpire controlled it so it didn't have to bend over to sweep you. the plate. Okay. And he hit the button, but he'd always make sure some umpires would wait till you round the plate. Thing would pop right and you jump yeah. scary and he'd laugh. It's <laughs> not that funny, really. No, <laughs> not for him, not for, for me for sure. Sounds like a broken bat. Rosales throws out Butler for the first out here in the bottom of the fifth. So Deadweiler back out there, and I think. He was able to work out of that jam, gave up one run in the fourth. So it looks like it's the gold suit tonight. So it's not Eric Burns, is it? <laughs> well, we don't know that. <laughs> so we've seen white, I believe. You got gold, which means you know there's a green in there somewhere. All green. Saw a picture of you on Twitter this offseason in an all green age uniform. Yeah. But I was also told that Steve Wooson had said, you know what? I know the A's had those all green uniforms, but very seldom did you wear them. In fact, maybe only a couple times. We didn't want to wear them. <laughs> <laughs> well, the picture showed why. Well, it looked all like green. Yeah. Well, we had the all green, the all gold, all white, and then mixed and matched. Oh, nice, Mark Ken. Rolls one into center field. So Canna two for three. Former Cal Bear. You think what Charlie Finley did with those uh, multicolored uniforms? Kind of the beginning of uh, what we see in baseball today. Mark Canna wearing the white shoes for the first time. Comes up swinging hard. Tell you, he attacks it and maintains that strength throughout the season. Gets to the batting, the hitting zone quickly. So the Bay Area native, the Cal product, comes up with a couple of hits in his first three major league at bats tonight. A little bit of a contest between he and Leighton North now. How about that? Laurie shoots on the right field, and that is a nice at bat. And that's how you discourage an opposing team or pitchers from throwing you nothing but breaking pitches because that was a hanging breaking ball from Detweiler. Watch this swing on the breaking ball. Stayed back and went after it to right field. And Kai, the great Ricky Henderson was very quick to talk to Brett Laurie tonight and even last night. But today before batting practice, during batting practice and just, you know, talked about making adjustments and you see that you're being pitched a certain way. You have to adjust because until you do, they're going to stay in a certain pattern. And Ricky has been through all those things and Hall of Fame players. You, you kind of want to listen when Ricky speaks. So two on one out. He's now with seven hits in the game. And Brett Laurie tonight is a Hall of Famer's number retired. But for Brett Laurie hitting the double to right center and the base hit to right field on the curveball. Very good approach. First pitch to Fegley is a bit low. Fegley hit a fly ball to center field and then he reached out an air and scored in the fourth. RBI opportunity for Josh Fickley. Fickley is 27 years old. From Terre Haute, Indiana. He won your two Ray as the offseason went on. Getting Fickley from the White Sox. Your fed head. All part of the plan of then, well, we can dangle Derek Norris out right. there and see what we could get for him. Got a pretty good pitch. It's that easy to do when it comes to 
big league trades, but I gotta believe that getting Fegley had obviously had something to do with being able to trade Mars. Well, it, it, and knowing that Stephen Bolt was going to be coming uh, back healthy and able to catch, and you have a left-handed hitter, right-handed hitter. Popped up. Playable. Fielder. And Fielder missed it. So Canick goes to third, but no reason for that. It was a foul ball. Prince Fielder was in trouble early on in that one. Well, it should have been most of the easy out. Yeah. Foul territory, he's camped under, then the wind took him a little bit, and Odor helping him up. That's a big man to help up, but he just missed it. So it's going to go as an error. It should. If the others are air, that better be an error. That's going to be three for the Rangers tonight, but, I mean, that is routine. It's not like he had to run a long way to get to the ball, and he knows he should have caught it. He's a very good first baseman. Very nimble around the back. Gives Fenton another chance. <laughs> and he takes advantage, shoots on the right field, the base hit. Canna's going to be held as the throw comes into the cutoff man fielder. So Fegley with a base hit. And again, the A's have the bases loaded. Man, an off speed pitch up in the zone. And Fegley, good job going that direction. Stayed back, opposite field a little bit towards the end of the bat, but got the job done. And then you give an extra opportunity to a major league hitter. And the pitcher makes a mistake, he'll take advantage if Fegley does. And it's good to see him get his first hit. He's reached base last inning on an error, which again could have gone another direction, but did not. So here's Simeon. First pitch is low. In a single and a run scored in the third and a walk in the fourth. Big opportunity. Can at third, Lori at second, Fegley at first. Detweiler off his glove. He knocks it down and rolls into foul territory. Canna scores. Seven to nothing. The A's lead, and that's going to be a hit. That's a case of the height of. Uh, that one might have hurt him because he, I don't know, maybe a second baseman doesn't handle it, but kind of a little bit of a highlight play. Front of the plate, up goes that water, and he catches the ball, flips it towards first base. At that point, no chance he's going to throw out Marcus Simeon. So it is a hit in an RBI. And that's going to be it for Detweiler. So four and a third for Detweiler when it's time for change. Think speedy oil change and tune up. Your oil change tune up and smog experts. Your attention, please. Ladies and gentlemen, coming in.
Fun Athletics and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Athletics Investment Group, LLC. Ross Detweiler knocked out here in the fifth inning. He's with a 7 0 lead, and they still have the bases loaded and one out. So the Rangers to the bullpen. Logan Thorne, who was claimed off waivers from the Orioles not long ago, just last weekend. Yeah. So he's in the big leagues, and that's all he cares about. His numbers last year in AAA. Like most pitchers now, is Mark Canna with a couple of hits, including the big three run double, but Moret with a two and four seam fastball, not really overpowering. A slide on the changeup in the game tonight for the first time in this big league season this year. First pitch is a strike. Tyler Laidenor's first major league hit, a triple. Was in the third. Now it's one and one. Cap, okay, you think about it that uh, that one has got Casimir five innings of great baseball, so he's done a job pitching. But that one retired the first five, the double. Now Laurie thrown out a third and retires the next batter. So Simeon one out hit, and that started off for the Athletics. Rosales charges. He'll go to second for one. The throw to first, not in time. They don't beat it out. And coming in to score is Lori, and it's eight to nothing. The Leydendorf has good speed. He showed it there, and he got himself an RBI. Now the high chop made it almost impossible to turn a double play. Plus, you look at going into second base, Simeon, which helps out tremendously as Odor had to leap up. You don't get as much on the throw. And the hustle by Leydendorf, who always runs hard to first. And they're going to check it. And yeah, they're going to check it. Looks like uh, they're going to challenge the play at first. And no, geez, his no foot, need. foot was already on the bag. That's well, watch Laidorf, and he does the right thing. Where look, look where he hits the bag in the front part of the bag. There. And I don't think that's any question about that one. I mean, it's something that if Bannister might as well challenge because otherwise it, it's a run, could be a double play, but. Foots on the bag just at the front, and that's all it takes the toe. And so the toe is there. Maybe from the angle of Jeff Bannister, thought maybe he had not touched the bag. But that is the extreme when you put your foot down on the toe, where any part of the foot touches the bag, that's it. That's all you need. So the nice split screen on these great video boards now, it shows the runner, Laidorf, coming down the bag. And the umpires with the headsets on waiting for New York to make the decision. Well, the new boards look good. Yes, they do. There's a gentleman between innings showcasing all by himself at the old board by himself. Yes, he did. But a door and out. So it's close, and clearly that has to be what they're looking at, the weather that that foot initial the bag yeah because it looks like it came off after he hit the bag and then but he hit it initially and then over the bag so and the headsets are off yep. and call stands so a fielder's choice RBI for Lagdorf two RBIs tonight for him two runs in the inning for the A's and they lead eight nothing so Fegley now at third with Leindorf at first and Gentry steps in and you can give an assist to Marcus Simeon because going around the horn the high chop to Rosales to Odor and Simeon was all over Odor at second base when you see an infielder has to jump he's not going to get a lot on the throw and I get a tough uh, time gripping the baseball also. So here's Gentry 0 for 2. Hit by a pitch and scored a run in the third. Gentry looking for his first hit. He's over. Right there. See. Uh, see the. The uh, when the flap. The shin guard flapped up. That means his foot had to be on the back. <laughs> oh. 
close play in time. Side retired A's get a couple of runs on four hits. So we are through five at O.co. Eight nothing. The A's lead the Rangers. A's great Jim Catfish Hunter was born in Hertford, North Carolina, the pitching ace of three World Series championship teams in Oakland in the 70s and won a couple championships with the Yankees as well. He made his major league debut in 1965 and went into the Hall of Fame in 1987. The late great Catfish Hunter and Ray, I know you hmm. visited him in Hertford, yeah. North Carolina. Yeah, after he had been diagnosed with boy, right? ALS and uh, it was a lot of fun to go down to Hertford and spend the day and a gentleman, a great pitcher, and uh, you know, just unfortunately passed away much, much too soon. But uh, he was a great pitcher, and you know, I, I thought it was interesting in talking to him. He said, "How did you learn how to throw strikes?" He said, "My older brother said if you're going to play with us, you're going to have to pitch to us and throw strikes." So that makes perfect sense. He, he learned how to. Yeah, you, you, his younger brother, probably thought the same thing, <laughs> right? It, it, it does. It, it yeah. just makes sense. I mean. Make you throw strikes. Yeah. If you're throwing strikes when you're 10 years old, you'll be throwing That's strikes right. when you're 30 years old. Absolutely. Torinos flies to center field for the Not first ready. out here in the sixth inning. You know, the thing about Catfish in that perfect Hockey. game against the Twins, he was more proud of the fact that he got hits and drove in runs. Pitched a perfect game. So he was a good hitter. Oh, a great hitter. And Kenny Holzman by the blue. All those guys are excellent hitters. And, you know, good friend Monty Moore was on Mike, calling a perfect game. So. Monty was there, had the three world championships. Yeah, too bad there's no video. Yeah. And there was not any video of the Catfish Hunter yeah. perfect game here at the Coliseum. Right. Jim Paglaroni, unfortunately, the battery had passed away. But, uh, best wishes to Dion and Monty Moore out of Porterville. And I know they watch our telecast quite a bit. Wish them the best. Just below us, and it's 0 2 to Leonis Martin. That's right. When we think about Monty Moore listening, and I know it makes me just make sure I tighten up my work a little bit because <laughs> you don't want to disappoint the great Monty Moore. Hook toward right. Ross, his first action of the night, he grabs it, and that's out number two. Cody Ross, Ross, one of the rare few who actually bat right and throw left, and. The other one is in town too, Number Ricky eight. Henderson. Number one. Thank you, of course. Uh, great left fielder for the Athletics for many years. Similar. And for a left fielder, you could imagine with the glove on the right hand heading down the corner as Ricky always did. Grabbing the ball, spinning, going back into second to keep uh, what could have been a double, a single. 
Well, Ricky was also telling Coco Crisp when he was moving to left field during spring training and working there. Ricky said, "You know, you're going to save your legs if you do that. Sure. Because you, you play in center, you have to back up right, you have to back up left. But you play left, <laughs> you're left. <laughs> That's it. That's right. It's it's the old the player who throws left bets right. There's just not very many. That's right." And if you think that we're just making that up, no, really, in Major League history, there's not very many of them. Is that Ludwig? Ludwig's a good call, yeah. Uh, and there's and Ricky, of course, and Tony Ross. That's right, Ludwig. You know who? Uh, Mark, remember Mark Carrion? Mark Carrion. Was, Mark Carrion. That's who I was thinking of. Yeah. But the fact that we're grinding on this tells you. I don't know what the number is, but. I, I don't think there's more than like 20, 20, 25 that, players I, in Major I, League history. I bet there's not that many. So we welcome the viewers who have been watching the Sacramento Kings tonight. Welcome to the Coliseum. Kings lose to the Jazz by 12. A's winning tonight here against the Rangers, eight to nothing. Jasmine has been terrific. So that's something to think about now that Cody Ross is an athletic. Players that have played in the big leagues that throw left hand and bat right hand. Remember Doug Alt with the yeah. Toronto Blue Jays back in the 70s? He was one of those guys. I, I would think the guy named B.I. Yeah, was called Brilliant Information could probably find out that list of those uh, players right before this. Next we'll, inning begins. We'll, we'll give them. <laughs> we will give them two minutes and 25 seconds. That's what it says right there on the board. Go, Go get for him, it, B.I. Casimir rolling along. He is in charge. 8 0 the A's lead. And First, Tyler Laidendorf, his first at bat in the big leagues, an RBI triple. He's pumped up. Later on in that inning, Mark Cannon in his second big league at bat, a bases loaded triple. So, how about that? Cannon playing first tonight, Laidendorf playing second. And Cooney, Ross. They are doing good tonight, and they should be pretty happy. They're smiling, I mean. So, it's always fun to see guys get their first. Major League oh, hit, yeah. and tonight they were big hits, difference-making hits. Well, and to get the baseballs, and those are always special too. When you get your first hit, and then you get the baseball, and somebody will fool around with it and write scribble things on it, and make sure. it look ugly. But bottom line, you know, you get the drill. Colin Calgill. Oh, good one. Colin Calgill throws left, bats yeah. right. With the Angels, and yeah, we should have got. Him. And he will be playing quite a bit with the absence of Josh Hamilton. 
0 oh, 2 to Cody Ross. Ross had an RBI single in that third inning when the A's scored five times. Facing Logan Barrett. Light drive right into the glove of Adam Rosales. One. The Ross hit it hard. Rosales went down to the shoot tops. Now that left fielder. And that'll bring up Zobers. Ben Zobrist. Remember Ben Zobrist. A home run. And a double, his first two at bats this year, but he has not had a hit since. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Overall, 2 for 12 on the season. First pitch is low. But Cap, you know, you're, you're pretty close to being run on since 1876. There have been just 56 position players listed as throwing left handed, bad exclusively right handed. Only three, this was as of March of 2013. Only three were active. And that's Cal Gill. Huh. Ludwig. Yeah, what a play, but he throws it into the dugout. And if that's not a hit in the air, I may be out of my chair. <laughs> hey, that rhymes. <laughs> Well, it's a great play, but sometimes it's better to hold it instead of throw it. And up the middle, then Zobris, great play there. And if you have to throw from your backside or to your knees, you're not going to get as much on it. You have to throw a little bit extra hard. And Elvis Sanders, good job getting to it. But watch this. All he could do is get extra on it. And over the head of Prince Fielder didn't even jump and into the dugout. So it is a single and an E6. Yeah. So that's four airs. By the Rangers tonight. It is an ugly night for Texas, a good night for the A's. So Zobris at second. So quite a few, more than we thought. Well, and that's Look going, going back. It's going back a long time, and that was a Wall Street Journal oh. article that, uh, and, and it said at the time only three: Ludwig, Cody Ross, and Calga were the only three playing Major League Baseball at the time, and I can't think of many since then. I think, so. I think you mentioned Mark Carey. Yeah, that, that was, was a while. Yeah. It's just so rare, so unusual. Remember, there are some pitchers who actually do the same, yep. but they're not really considered as far as everyday players who just position make their money uh, actually hitting versus pitching. Is just like Randy Johnson. You remember that? Inside the ball. Really, the worst thing for a pitcher is to bat opposite the way yep. he throws, because that means his throwing arm is exposed to the pitcher and. In the case of Butler, who throws right handed, his left arm is exposed. So you imagine a pitcher just reversing that. Two and one to Butler with an RBI sitting out there. Correct with a slider. Pretty good one. Butler tonight is 0 for 2. Big country breakfast got uh, all kinds of the right side of so surprise in the way certain guys are being pulled as much as they are. The center field, that'll fall in for a hit. They're going to hold up Zobers as Martin gets it in quickly. So Butler has his first hit. Boy, the A's have had base moves all over the place tonight. See that approach by, by Billy Butler, and that's a great approach. And, you know, runner in score position. He just swung wildly at a breaking ball. But watch this swing. Gets another breaking ball, stays back more, and stays inside. And look where the ball goes. Right center. That is a great, great swing by a guy who knows how to drive in runs when it comes to country breakfast. <laughs> Yeah, he's going to be happy tomorrow morning here at the Coliseum. Country breakfast because Ryan Davis, Steve Lucia, and John the Clubhouse, they have some right. good breakfast on day games after night games. Well, that is Billy Butler right wow. there. We've seen him enough now with all those great years with the Royals. He is not afraid to drive the ball to right field. You have a hitter in the cleanup spot, you're saying, well, how about home runs? Home runs will come. Runs batted in. I think you said that. That's the most important stat you can look at. I think it is too. Uh, how many runs you can drive in, regardless of how you do it. And if 
you have and you stay on pitches and you're able to go to right center left center you keep in that part of the, of the field you're going to drive in a lot of runs and avoid rounding into double plays because you're trying to pull everything and up left field Rua near the wall and he can't get it it rolls off the wall into the corner one run scores Butler to third have a night Marcana by oh my. Mark Hanna is putting on a show. Three hits, four RBIs in his major league debut. And he just showed his power. This was an off-speed pitch out front one hand and almost hit it to 330 mark. Right after 330 mark, almost 331. One hand is swing down the line. Thank you. Do I have my first major league home run? This is how close it comes to being one. Top of the wall. Murak can't get to it. Karen's off the wall, so one scores. That's how close it was to being his first. He will get plenty of that type of swing. <laughs> the way he's playing, he's going to get a chance to hit plenty. Here's Lori. Rosales, what a play. Checks out Butler, fires to first late. Lori has a hit. Bases are loaded. Rosales glanced at Butler and that half a second that it took for him to glance and then turn to first, Lori beat it out. Great diving catch and, and you now sometimes you have to wonder why you're going to look. This is Billy Butler. He's not going to go in, go in contact. He's going to wait to see if the ball goes through. Rosales leaves his feet, gets up. If he throws immediately, he gets him. You have to realize the hitter has excellent speed and Brett Lori and he beats out an infield hit. And he took a little step toward third as yep. well. Watch right there. Red Laurie hustling, smelling a hit, even with the dive. And he's able to beat him out. And here's a guy struck out four times last night on 12 pitches. And he's got three hits tonight. So nine to nothing. goes around. They scored five in the third, one in the fourth, two in the fifth, one here in the sixth, and obviously looking for a bunch more with the bases loaded. <laughs> Tappert's going to roll foul down the first baseline. Thirteen hits now for the A's to go with their nine runs. Jesse Hahn's got to be thinking. Sonny Gray, eight runs. He's got Casimir, nine runs so far. I got zero <laughs> or one. Yep. But that's the way it goes. The A's played great Monday night. Jesse Hahn pitched last night. They pitched well. Three runs, and it's going to be less than that. One of those. Uh, as a result of an error, the run scored, couldn't assume a double play. You see Han pitch well, looking forward to his next start, which probably will come against King Felix on Sunday. Angels still leading the Mariners. It's now five to three in the seventh inning. Keep an eye on that one. One-two pitch in the dirt, but Fegley chased it for the second out. Well, Fegley now one for four. Now batting. Just a little bit too anxious on the slider, especially with the bases loaded. A good night to be an ace hitter. There's been RBI chances all over the place. Simeon has a single, a walk, and a single. He's got an RBI, he's got a run scored. First pitch to him, drops in for a strike. Simeon now three for nine on the season. Nice ball, good swing, fouls it straight back. Two runners, Butler at third. Canna at second and Laurie at first. 
four hits in the inning for the A's and a run. He's knocked out Detweiler in the fifth inning and Barrett took over. Pitch, Simeon, one around. Oh, this is Adam Pavar. You gotta be kidding me. Wow. Simeon can't believe it. And that's how the inning ends. A's get a run, and it's 9 nothing as we head to the seventh. Robinson makes his debut as Major League Baseball's first black manager. He was also a player manager, and he was the designated hitter that day. And what do you think he did in his first at bat at the mistake by the lake? That's right. The Hall of Famer hit a home run, and the place went crazy 40 years ago. For Robinson, it was his eighth opening day home run, setting a Major League record, which will later be tied by Ken Griffey and Adam Dunn. So Frank Robinson, player manager, with the Cleveland Indians and the first black manager in Major League history. And you played for Frank the next year, right? 76, and unfortunately he was relieved of his duties in 77. But see that triple crown. He was traded from Cincinnati Reds to the Baltimore Orioles. And of course uh, managed Cleveland, managed the Orioles and Giants. And you, before that he started, you mentioned John Lowenstein. And one of the greatest was Frank Robinson was managing and hitting. John Lowenstein tried to steal home. And he slid in the home, and here's Frank looking down at him. And what are you doing? Don't you know who's hitting? <laughs> well, I brought his name up because it, it, there's a in that video. There's a player who's kind of hugging Frank, and it's John Lewis. <laughs> that was before he was thrown out yeah, of the exactly. plate. I mean, he didn't. Not much hugging after that. <laughs> but I know my brother played. For Frank with you in Cleveland, and he said Frank was he was tough. Yes, he was his first time as yeah. a manager. I think he mellowed a little bit later on when he was with the Giants. What a play, Simeon! But it bounces off his glove and not quite getting him at first on a close play. So Beltre is aboard. Official scores having a tough time tonight because there have been some. Some plays that uh, they've had to look Number at. Number 84, Prince Fielder. Simi. E6. So he really didn't catch the ball, hit him on the heel of the glove. And see, that's that's not a normal play. That's it's not. That's a range. I mean, that's a base hit up the middle, but because of its range, he gets to it, stabs at it. And sure, if he comes up with it cleanly, probably throws him out, but you cannot assume that. I mean, there's a whole bunch of errors tonight that should not. I think. That's my personal opinion. So Beltre's aboard on the air, and here's Prince Fielder who has struck out at walk.
So Scott Kazmir, nine strikeouts in one walk. Six plus innings, 84 pitches. Otero starts to loosen up. Otero has yet to pitch this year. I think for Scott, it, his goal is to get through this inning and have a clean seventh and get in the dugout and turn it over to the bullpen in the eighth. High in the air, left field. Zobers gets back. He's under it, makes the catch. So we showed you Frank Robinson, but. How about this yep. memorable moment on this date? Aaron waiting, the outfield deep and straight away. Fastball is a high drive in the deep left center field. Buckner goes back to the fence. It is gone. What a marvelous moment for baseball. What a marvelous moment for Atlanta and the state of Georgia. What a marvelous moment for the country and the world. A black man is getting a standing ovation in the deep south for breaking a record of an all-time baseball idol. So that was Vin Scully, yeah. and quite frankly, I kind of like Vin Scully's call on the Aaron home run. That's right. That's great. I think we should hear that call a little bit more. The great Vin Scully, and right. what a moment that was for me. I remember Tom House, who was in the bullpen in Atlanta and caught the ball, came running in and didn't say, Hey, I've got number 715, I'm going to put it on some and make some money. He came running in and handed it to Hammer and Hank Aaron. So Rua strikes out. Hank Aaron, MVP, gold glove. Won a World Series with the Milwaukee Number Braves 20, in 57. Jake you don't have to Lair can pull up just to show his hands around the bat. No batting gloves. He was wrist. I mean, you look at some of the sizes of players and how strong they are. All he had hands, wrist, and forearms. And he and of course the late Ernie Banks passing away earlier this year. But it was remarkable just to watch him play. And he wasn't swinging a 31 ounce oh, bat. No, 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 no. <laughs> Ten strikeouts for Kazmir, 23rd time in his career that he is at 10 or more strikeouts. He had a stretch where he struck out six in seven batters. And look at the hands. Thank you, Deliver. Watch the hands and look at the hands of, of Hank Aaron. Look at those hands. And just watch this. Strides, snap. And it's all just bam right there with the hands. Dusty Baker in the on deck circle. Thank you to Larry. You're right. Number 12 and he knew it was gone. So did everybody else. And he really had a, I mean watching Aaron swing. He had a pretty big stride. Yes, he did. That but was a long stride. Back. Yeah. Hands stayed back and then it became all hands and wrists to, to swing and hit the ball the way he did. 3 and 0 oh to Jake Smolinski. But evidently when Tom House told the story, the relievers positioned themselves. They all had spots in the bullpen because <laughs> they figured if they hit the home run, somebody was going to be there to catch it. And it happened to be Tom House. And, you know, exciting moment for him and especially to be a, the pitcher that he was, a great pitching coach for the Rangers for many years. One of the first to use the football yeah, to teach proper mechanics to throw the baseball. So Smolinski's aboard. Two on, two out. Bullpen is ready. Captain spring training had the opportunity when I was with Cleveland down in Tucson as the Braves were coming through to head west. Hank Aaron, I capped the game a little bit later and I saw Sam McDowell drop two of the most beautiful curveballs ever. And I said, call another curveball. He shook me off to throw a fastball before I could get out of the catching position is banging off the left center field wall. Yeah. Hank Aaron could hit a fastball no matter if it's throwing 100. Or 95, he tried to throw a fastball up and into him. He would get that buggy whip on that bat so quickly. Unbelievable. And I was wow. And, and, <laughs> I mean, I got to believe back in, in those days, the, the bats they were using probably 35, 36 oh, ounces, yeah, maybe absolutely. even more. Absolutely. They weren't the 30, 31s now. I mean, Babe Ruth used a 52 ounce bat. Think about that. But you ask guys who, who played and they yeah, oh, 30, start 35, 36 ounce. And, Kind of balance it out to a 35 inch bat. Huh. That's that's a heavy bat.
You had Ohio high corporate field and the Braves came through with Hank Aaron. Probably a big deal. They put a rope up in the warning track and allowed people to stand on the warning track. There were so many oh. people Open, overflow. So you can imagine the warning track with a yellow rope all the way sure. across and all the people on the warning. They wanted as many people to get in the city as possible. I mean, this, after all, is Hank Aaron. Line drive. Zobrist is there, makes the catch, side retired, so the Rangers strand a pair. Seventh inning stretch coming up from the Coliseum. Casimir and the Athletics leading nine to nothing. Post game sound. Warriors comments as they make some news. And Tiger Jack Shine at the Masters. It was par three day at the Masters. I'm Ed Farid and David Feldman will host Sportsnet Central tonight, 10 30 on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. Big night for Scott Casmir. Seven innings, 10 strikeouts, just one hit allowed. <laughs> Leading off the game with a bunt base hit. So. And Mark. Rangers had just one hit on Monday night. That's right. One. And if Mark Hanna makes that play, <laughs> that's right. I mean, he's had a great night offensively. Makes a defensive play. He thought he had it in his glove when he went to oh, dive for that's right for uh, Nianos Martin, who did bump. Delano de Shields, son of Delano de Shields, <laughs> makes his major league debut in center field. The young man making the Rangers roster. Logan Barrett back out there. He's got an inning and two thirds of relief out of the bullpen so far as he faced Leidendorf, Gentry, and Ross. Eighth inning now up in Seattle. Angels five, Mariners three. Rubber game of that series. Pujols with a home run early. Miller and Seeger have homered for the Mariners. Two and two. For Pujols, it was career home run number 521. A little bit outside to make the count full. Lindor triple. Fielder's choice, another fielder's choice. He's got a couple of RBIs. He's got a run scored in his major league debut. A history lesson for you first time two players making major league debuts in the same game for the same team each have two or more RBIs How about that somebody's Honestly. doing some great work to come up with motion like that That's good. Canada's got four RBIs Legdorf's on base for the fourth time and you know, you think back to the ball, he hit the hole where they tried to get the runner at third. Now, and the only play. If there's not a runner second, that's an infield hit because they're not going to throw out Leidenhoff with his speed. 
right. But it turned out to be an error because Rosales uh, couldn't get to the bag and find the bag. But this time, Leidendorf starts 0 2, takes a couple of tough breaking pitches, and then a couple of fastballs and ends up drawing a walk. So good AB there as well. First pitch strike to Gentry. The Indians shut out the Astros tonight, two to nothing. Carrasco got the win, Feldman the loss. Carrasco just got a nice contract extension. Mm -hmm. Right-hander for the Indians. That's the exact same score reversed as Monday night. The Indians were shut out two to nothing. Ray shut out the Orioles two to nothing. So the Rays get their first win. Kansas City beat Chicago seven to five in Kansas City. Osper had a three-run homer in that game. That will allow Endorf to head down to second base in a pitch that was very much in the dirt. Tigers shut out the Twins 11 to nothing behind Annabelle Sanchez. He beat Ricky Nolasco. The back-to-back -back shutouts for Detroit. Still pretty good team in that yeah, central division. Are. I agree. Kinsler had four RBIs. Tigers had 15 hits total. Joe Nathan went on the disabled list. That could be an issue for the Tigers. Verlander, I think he's going to stay on the disabled list for a little while. Thought maybe he could start a game this weekend, but I don't. Didn't sound like that was going to happen. That was interesting because when they selected the 25, they didn't initially put him on. They kept him on the roster, figuring they didn't have to because he could be a pitcher and maybe avoid spending the 15 days on the DL. The Shields. Goes back. Looks like that ball had a little knuckling action. Gentry's retired. Landorf hustles. Tags up. Goes to third. And Landorf is pretty smart. I mean, he's got some instincts and saw the ball was going to be caught. He immediately backed the bag and then flew to third base. So Ross, another opportunity as he had the bases loaded in the fourth. Landorf. Crack of the bat, and then goes back to see and sprinter. Well, you love to see speed, don't you? And he's, he plays hard all the time, and saw that all spring, and that was fun to watch. Owen won the count to Cody Ross, his first game as an athletic. Ground out, RBI single, strikeout line out, one for four. Takes that one, watches it drop low. Yankees beat the Blue Jays four to three. Yankees had a three-run eighth inning to grab the lead, and they hung on. Four for four with a couple of strikeouts was Alex Rodriguez. And the Phillies beat the Red Sox four to two. In interleague series that's going on. Jeff Francoeur hit a three-run homer. Jeff Francoeur made the Phillies. That's great. Hit a three-run homer off Porcello. Who? Rick Porcello. He didn't decide a big contract. Yes, he did. <laughs> Grounded to short. And will get a run home. So Cody Ross has a two RBI night in his A's debut as Leidendorf scores. And it's now 10-0. Cat, that was interesting, and of course, Brandon, the Rangers are well behind in this game, but going to run a third and one out. Still, the infield played back, so all Cody Ross had to do was what he did, and that's put the ball on the ground. And so, kind of laden doors, kind of helped producer run running walk while pitch on the third and then score. Eric Sogard's going to hit for Zobrist. Zobris tonight was one for four. I think Martinez right him to be pitching tomorrow for the Rangers and pretty good chance of Sogard to be back at second base. If that's the case, he gets it at bat tonight. And I think that's always something to see managers. Bob Melvin does a very nice job where he'll say, okay, if you're going to be playing tomorrow, get your AB tonight. Got to get you ready. And Ben Zobris a couple of innings off as well as he's played. 
all three games. So that one at bat can make a difference. You can. I mean, just you know, familiarize yourself. Just keep. He played the first two games at Sogard, and just you know, instead of sitting and sitting, you get a chance to get back in the action. A little part of it, and quick turnaround tomorrow for the day game in the series finale, and be ready to go. I mean, it's kind of a dual purpose, you know. Get Zobrist a couple of innings and get Sogard in the back and play defense and be ready to go. So all two is Sogard. Up and in, just a touch. Sogard does so well. He can spoil some good pitches. I mean, this is a tough pitch, and he just kind of reached for it. So he'll see a one two pitch here. And now two and two. Living a dream. Yes. Living a dream. April 8th. He'll remember that day. Especially that baseball in his first major league. He had a trip and RBI is going to have the date on it. I would ask him many years. Who's Ross Detweiler. Well, he's the pitcher I got my first major league hit. He'll always remember Ross Detweiler. Odor in a couple steps. He's got it side retired. Another run for the Athletics. We are on to the eighth inning. It's 10 0 the A's lead. Brought to you by PG&E, together building a better California. Now batting, number 12, Rudman Odor. Ricky won it, it looks like. Ricky here tonight? Ricky is here, and well, Ricky, Ricky said, every time I'm here, I should always win. He said, I think somebody puts me in that Ricky outfit out there <laughs> because I win, and he should, because like Raleigh said, it's Hall of Famer. I say, what are you, you going to do? Argue with the guy? I know. Well, when, when the A's were here, and Raleigh was racing, and you know, I tried to convince them that Raleigh was not going to win, but he did. But Ricky and said, "How's Raleigh beat me? There's no way Raleigh's going to beat Ricky." I think you're right. And when it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change tune up and smog experts. Dan Otero gets his first action of 2015. Look at the numbers from last year: 86 and two-thirds innings pitched, and. 
valuable has he become for the athletics? Well, even more so now, especially with Sean Doolittle. So with Doolittle out, Clifford is in the closer row. So you have a bod and Otero, different guys setting up now. <laughs> oh, two pitch right there, strike three called. Tyler Leidendorf moves from second base to left field, and Eric Sogard stays in the game. So Leidendorf will be a couple of innings in the outfield. Sogard now at second base. And there's your versatility. That's, uh, that's why he brings so many gloves out on the field just in case he's going to need them. Chirinos, who has struck out and hit a fly ball to center field. Remember, the Rangers have one hit, and it was the first batter of the game. And as Ray mentioned, it was a bun hit. And that's the only hit. And they only had one hit on opening night. That was in the eighth inning. They had eight hits last night. Sonny Gray was terrific. Monday, Casimir terrific tonight. Seven innings, a couple of walks, 10 strikeouts, and finishes with 95 pitches. Had the trainer come out and check on him. He was able to stay in the game. They came out and checked on him in the fourth inning. He stayed yeah. in there and he pitched three more innings. That was great. You saw that 23rd 10 plus strikeout game, and you think how many Nolan Ryan had in his career, and then I'd say that's doubtful that the Ryan Express record will be broken. 2 2 pitch, kind of a hanging breaking ball that skied toward late North foul territory, and he's got it right in front of his bullpen teammates. You know, that's not an easy play either. No. There's a lot going on down there. <laughs> there's, you know, there's players and home plates and security guards. How about and it? a ball boy Number trying seven. to catch it. <laughs> <laughs> Heaters. And, and think of the relievers getting out of the way, but tell you what, young men who are down on the corner should late to the ball drops before they move from their seats just because they're moving a little bit too early. Never forget the guy in Yankee Stadium who came out of his seat and grabbed the ball. It was a fair ball. And it happens. Yeah. See that wood right there. Ball bounces off that. Obviously, it's in play. If it bounces over that wood and under the chairs, it is then a dead ball. And that wood has never been there. And now that it is there, the rule has been changed. Before, if it rolled under those chairs, yeah. You were going in there digging for any baseball that you could get your hands on, and the ball was in play. Are now. you sure, Kai? I think if you see that again, you'll see guys are propping their feet up on that piece of wood. See? Look at this. That's a prop. That's it. I think it's there for that yeah. and to block the baseball. Comfort. <laughs> <laughs> David Renetti was right before the season started down there, hammer, nail, two by fours. <laughs> right. Now he was finding a weight room for the visiting team. <laughs> he is, he is. And he found it. Busy man. He moved everybody in the offseason. David Renetti did and did a great job. All the ticket people on the Coliseum side next to Steve Finelli and Josh. Well, Terrell will grab it and hold it. And that was Delino DeShield's first big league at bat. And he's got himself a base hit. So that, congratulations. That was to like Delano mine. <laughs> that was just like mine. <laughs> So the line of the shields is going to forget that the score is 10 nothing. He's got yeah, a buddy. big league batting yeah. average. Well, and the only play was really going to be for Brett Lloyd. And he might have been saying, what are you doing, Dan? You're a you're great fielder and everything, but the shields, like the other the shields, can run. His father? A good second baseman for many, many years in the big leagues. Andrus goes after the first pitch, hits it into the air where Cody Ross has it side retired. Hitting a runner left in the bottom of the eighth is coming up 10 0 the A's lead.
Brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Xfinity, home of the most live sports. Let's check out our game summary brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. 0, 2, and 4. That's not a good line. <laughs> 0, 2, and 4 for the Rangers. 10, 13, and 1 for the A's. Detweiler got knocked around. Casimir was terrific. And the story tonight, major league debuts for Mark Canna and Tyler Lindorf. And they have both been terrific. A night to remember for those youngsters. So bottom of the eighth inning. When it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune-up. Your oil change tune-up and smog experts. Phil Klein comes in. Klein, his second appearance this year. As he faces Billy Butler. Butler, Canna, and Lori here in the eighth. Two-thirds innings for Obie Moran. Shot to right. How about that? That's Billy Butler right there, and he is two for four. Hey, this Friday versus the Mariners, it's Authentic Fan Friday. Get a ticket in our value deck behind home plate, an Authentic Fan long sleeve t-shirt, a cheer card, and a $6 food drink voucher all for one great price. The best deal in Bay Area baseball is Comcast Sportsnet's Authentic Fan Friday. He's the Mariners Friday night. Be here. Good looking outfit there. The Green and gold bib overalls. Phone. Hannah. Oh. Up the hill. Oh. Well, he already has a three hit game. He can announce that and try for his fourth, but almost took one up under the chin. Lost his balance as he fell down or fell back. Butler obviously not being held. It's just low. 2 and 0. Marcana with Boomy double to right center to drive in three in his first major league hit. You think when DeShields got the first on that infield hit, Cannon would say, You gonna take that? <laughs> you, you gonna take that first hit for you? No, it's been a great night for him, man. Importantly. Well, he's missed hitting two home runs by a total of about a foot and a half. That's right. His first ball bounced literally off the top of the wall. It's RJ Elford. And second double in the sixth inning. Just home run by about a foot. Fastball right there, and it's three and one. You know, one of the nice things about both of these young players in Canada and Leydendor, how well they've taken pitches and probably. Last at bat for Leidendorf. He walked after falling behind 0 2, and now Canna, 3 and 1. In the with four hits against the Giants. I think three of those were doubles. Now 3 and 2. But I like the way they're taking pitches, which uh, good at bats and being patient, and Leidendorf recognizes the spin on the breaking pitches. Tom Greve, the father of Ben, of course. And as Tom, how Ben doing? He said, well, he's in fantasy baseball now. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> Big swing by Cannon. Does not get cheated. Steve Busby. Yep. And Tom Green, the two Texas Rangers announcers to former very good players. Steve Busby. Good pitcher. Hard it's, throw. It's two no hitters. The only pitcher major league baseball to pitch a no hitter in each of his first two seasons. In his tenth major league start, pitched a no hitter. Oh. Canna skies one. Andrews behind second base now drifts over to the right side of the diamond. He's got it, and Canna is retired. So he finishes three for five. And now Brett Laurie steps in. Laurie's got three hits. 
double in the second, ground out in the third, single in the fifth, single in the sixth. Remember the old saying, they say, what have you done for me lately? In the case of Brett Lawrence, what have you done for me tonight? And last night, though, not so good, but he kept a very positive attitude after striking out four times. And what does he do tonight? Gets three hits and trying to get his fourth. And that's really how you have to play games. If you're an everyday player, the last thing you should do is dwell on what you did not do the previous game. And just take it into a new game, a new start, and just wipe the slate clean. And that's what he's done. And probably thanks to that man right there, Ricky Henderson, who had a few conversations with him. Oh, and two. Keith Lipman has talked about as the director of play development for the A's how much Ricky has been accepted by a lot of the minor league players and like sponges lifts in every word Ricky says and Ricky, great teacher of how to run the bases and steal bases and just overall play the great game of baseball. Oh, two pitches hit high in the air. Andrews going back. He'll take care of this one as well. So two outs. On Friday here for the 10th from the A's host the Seattle Mariners 15,000 fans will receive a sunny gray Oakland replica jersey courtesy of Cash Creek Casino Resort. Get tickets now at athletics.com slash tickets. Jared Parker and Jared getting closer. Had a full beard spring training so you know he's Starting to get ready because he's getting the game face on. Clean shaven. Fastball thickly swings and misses. So that's the sign, right? That's the sign. Now for Josh Reddick, he said he's going to play tomorrow night, right? Yeah. So that means the clock starts for him. That's his first game of the season, essentially, as far as a rehab. They have 20 games as a position player. In the case of Jared Parker, whenever he makes his first rehab appearance, which it's not necessarily going to happen right now. That will start his clock, which is 30 days for a pitcher because they don't pitch as much or play as much as a position player. So they allow a pitcher to stay down 30 days in a rehab assignment. Position player is just 20. So he's going to wait a little while before yeah. he pitches in a regular. Yeah, game. and that's that's the best way because once the clock starts, that means in 30 days they have to decide what they're going to do with, with the pitcher in this case. So a little pop out, side retired, and the A's will try to wrap it up three outs away from their second win of the year.
All A's tonight, 10 nothing, top of the ninth inning. And when it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune-up. Your oil change should have been smog experts. R.J. Alvarez comes in. Numbers last season with the Padres. Came over in the Derek Norris trade with Jesse Hahn. Kid can throw hard. Yes, he can. R.J. Alvarez. He's 23 years old, 6'2", 215. And interesting thing with Alvarez is in July of last year, he was traded from the Angels to the Padres in the Houston Street deal. And then just a couple of months later, he's traded again from the Padres to the Athletics. But a young man who's got a lot of talent. See, he's a little three-quarter delivery and three-quarter delivery with quite a bit of velocity. And it drops down like he's going to throw a sidearm, but then unleashes a very good mid-90s fastball. And for him, it's all about throwing strikes. When he does that, it's tough to hit. Center field. Gentry is there and Beltre is retired. Here's tonight's Honda player of the game, Scott Casimir. A little bit concerned in the fourth inning, but he came back and what a job, what a finish he had. Striking out 10, 23rd time in his career, at least 10 strikeouts. Here's all of his pitches and especially a good fastball after featuring some changeups. Scott Casimir taking off in 2015, like he pitched in 2014. Chance to win his first game of the season after winning 15. Last year. First pitch to Prince Fielder. A little bit high from Alvarez. Day baseball tomorrow, and we will have it for you right here in Comcast Sportsnet, California. Kendall Graveman and Nick Martinez, a couple of young right handers. Game's pregame live starts at noon. First pitch scheduled for 1235. So our first day game here at the Coliseum. And we're going to get to enjoy watching Kendall Graveman, who uh, was a nice interviewer in a Thursday telecast over against the Giants in San Francisco. Pitched the next game. He got squeezed a little bit, but uh, he makes his major league debut tomorrow from the starting standpoint. Pitched out of the bullpen for the Blue Jays last year. Off the glove and inside. So 3 0 the count. So again, we'll have that for you. Coverage starts at noon and then. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the Seattle Mariners will be here. Kathy also should mention, as far as telecast, that that'd be April 15th, right. which is next week in Houston. That's not on the schedule as a televised game, but we'll have it right here on Comcast Sportsnet California. And sorry to say that we're doing that because the Sharks run a minute. That's right. Uh, That's the Wednesday game, yeah. and it's a night game in Houston, or night game there, 5 o'clock start here. So yes. we will be televising. All three games from Houston. It's Jackie Jack Robinson Day too, right? That's right. Tax Day, Jackie Robinson Day. <laughs> it's amazing that they picked that date because it is a very important day. Prince Fielder, right field line. Cody Ross goes into a slide to try to get to it, maybe a little bit quicker. Prince Fielder is going to have a one-out double. That's why breaking pitches and getting ahead of the count are very important because this swing on the 3-1 fastball that Prince Fielder was looking for got it hooking it down Number the corner. 16, Ryan Rua. I don't know that this slide, if he comes up with it successfully, if it's going to keep Prince at a single, but slide the ball was knocked down, but Prince runs pretty well for a big guy. So that's just the third hit for the Rangers. In this game and just their 12th hit in the series. Here's Ryan Rua. Fastball swing and miss. Rua has to wonder what the heck is going on. It's like he's got a hole in the back. He's 0 for 3, three strikeouts, all three swinging. All against Scott Casimir. Now 
Alvarez from the time he delivers the ball and kind of lands looks like Eck a little bit. A little bit. I mean the hair. That's curious. Watch, watch how he kind of finishes. Eck was drop down guy. I don't know that the hair goes through that hard. <laughs> Two. Oh, just got a piece of it. Smolinski waiting in the on deck circle. It's a final in Seattle. The Angels beat the Mariners five to three. So the Angels go up to Seattle, opening series, and they take two out of three. Angels get Garrett Richards back. That's going to be a big lift for them. Just see the guy back out there, and he's going to come back very right. soon. Well, it's going to be a tough division all the way through, and you can see two of the top teams going head to head up in Seattle. And Angels, after being defeated in the opening series, uh, King Felix scored one run on the home run by Mike Trout, but won the next two. They won the next two. Going somewhere. I don't think Prince Fielder's <laughs> going anywhere, but RJ Helper is full sign. Good pitch. That's nasty. <laughs> it's nasty. 89 miles an hour, and it just kind of a turbo sinker. And it went down, and we all had to be thinking, wait a minute, that's not fair. Okay. But how about this, guy? Ruaz at bat tonight. Four ABs. First to bat, 0 2, strikeout. Second to bat, 0 2, strikeout. Third to bat, 0 2, strikeout. Fourth at bat, he saw a few more pitches. He saw actually five pitches in the last at bat and had one out of the strike zone. <laughs> but still, the result was the same strikeout. And that last pitch is one that if Alvarez can. Throw consistently. Not many people are going to hit. So I think you see Jesse Hahn. What he has, you see Alvarez. What he has, then you, you understand why the A's traded Derek Norris. That's nothing against Derek Norris, who was an All Star. Right? Ball takes a big bounce down into the first row, rattles around a little bit. Crowd tonight, a little over 19,000. These have had this one in hand for most of the ball game. It's going five in the third. One and one to count to Smolinski, who has struck out the rod that hit by Lori, and he has walked. Right there for a strike. Took a little bit off, and now the count one and two. That would act like a screwball. He threw it, kind of floated in, had the hard one to Ross, struck him up. There it is. All they had to do is point. <laughs> just don't point with just two strikes. Yeah. Twing and a miss, and that'll do it. All good tonight for the Oakland Athletics as they dominate the Texas Rangers 10 0. Major League debuts, the heroes, in fact. We're not going to interview just one guy tonight, Ray. Right. We're going to interview two. Layton Dorf. Hope they don't turn us down. I hope they don't either, because <laughs> we're counting on them. Good night tonight. Athletics over the Rangers. Ten to nothing. You've been watching Oakland A's baseball at Comcast Sportsnet California. Don't go away. A's postgame live with Brody Brazil and Shooty Babbitt starts right now.